Okay, guys, so now today we're doing the example. So remember last time we did the simple case of one wing spar, which we had just two flanges or two stiffener and one panel. Okay, so this is kind of a similar problem, but this time we have multiple stiffener, multiple panels, and you see this is three dimensions saying that the geometry is changing. You see here, there's a width of 1.6 at the tip is 0 0.8, no? Okay, and the height here is 0 0.8 and at the tip is 0 0.4. Oh, sorry, let me do the figure then. Sorry for that, I thought I had the figure done. So, sorry for that. So basically what I was saying is that you can see here that the height is 0 0.8, all those dimensions will be in meters. But you see that at the tip over here, the depth of the wing spar is just half of it, 0 0.4. At the base, which is cantilever, which is fixed, the width is one, sorry, the width of the wing spar is 1.6 meters, but at the tip, only 0 0.8, and that the total length of the wing spar is four meters. All right, so at Z equals two meters, which will be right at the middle, what would you have? What would be the width? What's the middle between 1.6 and 0 0.8? 1.6. One point two, okay, so linear variation. And the change and the depth would be what? It is zero point eight at the root and zero point four at the tip. In the middle would be zero point six, no? At two meters. Yeah, right in the middle to make the cut. Okay, so over here, like always, I think I go clockwise for the number one, two, three, four, five, six. And in this case, you have thickness over here, T34 equal T16 equals three millimeters. And then top and bottom. Uh, let's say here, write T12 equal T23 equals two millimeters and T65, T whatever, five, six or four, five, it doesn't matter. Five, four, five, also equal to two millimeters. Okay, the areas of the booms are given by B1 equal B6 equals 900, where B3 equal B4 equal 900 millimeter square and B2 equals B5 equal 1200 millimeter square. The question is to determine the actual stresses and shear flows at a section two meters 
from six m. Okay, so maybe the first thing we can do is to find the moment of inertia before I forget, because otherwise I keep forgetting that one. All right, so I'm gonna do here a very small figure of the same problem, but. So this is symmetric. So this line will be the CG, but also will be the whatever. This is CG if you want, but also the neutral axis when we're gonna calculate the Y. All right. Okay, so over here we're gonna calculate the moment of inertia. Oh, I forgot one thing here on the on the figure, here on the first figure, sorry, which I think is the force. There's a force being applied here. Dy and Vy is equal to 100 kilonewtons. Sorry for that. So anyway, so since the Vy is just coming up. So this is going to bend or it's going to flex about which axis? About the I X X, no? Really this should be X Y. Okay, so here we're going to have, you have the stiffness of this stiffness of flanges. So from one to six, of the B sub R's Y sub R square plus, let's say we're gonna take here the I of the panels because you see each one, there's a panel here, no? All these over here are different panels, right? All around. So this will be equal to what? So let's see. We have B1, B6, B2, and B5. Uh, sorry, B1, B6, B3, B4. So B1, B6, B3, B4, that are all the same. So I can just combine all of them. So we can say, let's say 400 times 900. What is the distance for one, three, four, and six. One, three, four, and six. You have the Y will be equal to what? It will be the, so it will be 0 0.3 meters, but this is in millimeters. So, oh, so I need to be careful here. So what would be that distance here then? This is the 0 0.3 meters. This is in millimeters since I use this one in millimeters, okay? So this is, if you want, this is for stiffeners. One, three, four, and six. Plus, now I can do two times the one in the middle, so two times 1200, times again what? Plus, minus 300, oh, I forgot to put the square here, be careful, square. This will be for what? Stiffeners two and five,
plus now I'm going to do the panels one, six, and three, four. They would be the same, no? So what would be the motor inertia for these two, two times 112? What would be the, what would be the base for these ones? What's the thickness of this panel? What's the thickness of this one? Three, no? What would be the base? Three, what would be the height? We have everything in millimeters would be 0 0.6 meters, which is the 600 millimeters, no? Yes? That here is, don't put too much here. This is 0 0.6 meters equal to 600. So cube. So this will be for panels one six and three four where the center would be in the middle and now we need to do the panels one two two three you want five six and five four so for the yes so for a half plus two of one twelve in this one what would be the value of the base 1.2 meters, or would be 1,200. What is the thickness of these panels here? Two. So times two. the cube but what do we need to do we need to move them now these ones we need to move them to the neutral axis no by using the parallax axis theorem so we'll be oops so we move this bar over here plus ad that will be twice the area so plus twelve hundred times two is the area times what is the distance would be the half of the 600 so 300 square so again this is a d square and this is for panels Whatever, let's say one, two, two, three, five, six, four, five. Okay. I make the whole length. So if you want panel one, three, if you do, do panel one, three, and, and four, six would be more accurate. So if you do all this calculation, you find that the moment of inertia is equal to 10, 80. 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4. Okay, so any question about how we got the moment of inertia? Okay, so in this problem, maybe I did not put it, but what is the assumption that we made? that the skin is effective in resisting bending, no? Since we put it into effect for the panels. So what would that be, case one or case two? I think that would be case one, no? Okay. All right. Now let's look for the loading. So basically, if you want, if I do a little figure of, of this, just a 1D figure, we have this with the force of
100 kilonewtons being applied, we make the cut over here, which is two meters and two meters. So if we do very quick, a little shear bending moment diagram, I know it would be reversed on the sign, but it doesn't matter for me, V, Z. What should be the value of the shear at the cut? And throughout the whole length, it will be constant, no? Equal to 1,000 kilonewtons. What will be the moment? What should be the moment at the tip? Zero. And here should be four times, or oh, I think it was 100 kilonewtons, not 1,000, sorry. It's 100 here. I keep writing 1,000. So 100, so it should be here 100. Okay, so here we'll have what then? 400 kilonewtons per millimeter. Uh, no, meter. This should be here zero. So what should it be then at two? It would be 200, no? Okay, so basically we're gonna get that at the cut, so at Z equals two meters. We know that the shear would be equal to 100 kilonewtons and the moment would be 200 kilonewtons per meter. Okay, so actually I was wrong before. I say it's case one, I think it's case two. So, so we say here panels effective in resisting bending. Which is case two. That's why we calculated the moment of inertia taking into consideration the panels. Okay, so in that case, we say that the sigma z is equal to the moment. So in this case, maybe let's be let's be a little bit more accurate if you want. This this force over here is going to create a moment about which axis? About the x, no? So if you want, if you want to be accurate, this would be x. That would not be more familiar. So it would be x over here. Then this would be bending about which axis? About the x would be bending about the. That's why we calculate the ixx, no? Yes, we're bending about the x, no? Okay. So even if you don't know the equation, here would be ixx. And then since you have this, we look at the value of the stress at the top and the bottom because right at the neutral axis, what should be the value of the stress? Zero, no? You do bend it, okay? So we look at the distance y. So this should be the equation. Okay, so if you remember, this would be the equation for each one of the, if you want, uh, R will be for different stiffness. Okay, so something that I do different than I don't like, I mean, I don't, I don't mind, but I think it's better to do it with understanding. If the force is going up this way, the top of the wing spar will be tension or compression. Compression on the bottom will be 
tension, okay? So I could say that one, two, three would be in compression and four, five, six would be in tension, all right? All right, so everyone, let's make this calculation here. So we're gonna have sigma here will be equal to what, uh, 200? Let's do everything in, in uh, millimeters, so it would be 200. Then to the six, let me put the units, Newton meters, times Y, what is Y? So I need to look at the figure, what should be Y? What's the distance between the neutral axis and one, two, three? What is that distance here between the neutral axis and one, two, and three? So it's 300. Maybe I need to put that on the figure. So here again, we have the figure at the cut. This is our neutral axis. This from where we calculate the Y. This is 300. Okay, divided by IXX that we say is 1080, 10 to the six. This gives you a sigma ZR equal to 55.56 Newtons millimeter square, which would be the same thing as Megapascals, okay? But again, I mean, we don't need to do it. If you want, you can do it. So what's important here is to notice that what? Sigma one will be equal to sigma two, will be equal to sigma three, equal to 55.56. And if you want, you can put the negative sign, but I'd rather don't put any sign, just say compression. If you put the negative sign, I will understand that it's compression. And sigma four, sigma five, sigma six will be 55.56 in tension. Okay, so if we go back to the Procedure here, then the forces in the stringers which are called most of the time flanges is given by what? So remember this equation, we had P, Z, R, equal to sigma ZR P sub R, P X R, the X component was given by P ZR delta X delta Y, uh, delta X delta Z, sorry. Yeah, I don't see on the screen, so let me know. This is, Delta X, Delta Z, okay? And the PYR is equal to the PZR, Delta Y, Delta Z. Okay, if you remember each one of the forces, each one of the P's here had a Z component and a Y component, okay? Delta X, Delta Z, Delta Y, Delta Z. That's the next step where I'm going to go to the next page, but where delta 
x delta z and delta y delta z are I think we did it once, we cannot discuss it. That comes from the geometry. So, all right, so basically what we're gonna do now is this figure here, we're still gonna look from the top. Okay, so if I look at it from the top, let's say I will have, uh, I'm going to do it sideways. Let's say this will be okay. So if I do the plot here, so let's see if this is 1.6, this is at the cut 1.2. This will be at the cut, which is two. So when we, when we look at the figure from here, what is the reference frame we're looking at from the top? What would be the, the, this would be the X, no? Okay. So basically it means we're looking at the X in this direction. And we are looking at that throughout the change in the length. So it will be X and Z, no? Yep, all right. So this is the cut. I could do all the way to the bottom, but since I do the cut, so again, this is multiple ways to do this, but this is an area where Johnny, you go too fast and it's easy to do a mistake. So if this is 1.6, 1.6 minus 1.2, would be 0 0.4, no? All right, but this is something you do, but that means that it would be 0 0.2 on each side, both adding to 0 0.4. Okay, so now if we do this, what would be then delta X over delta Z? What's the change in, in X? 0 0.2 for what length? Two. So this is equal to 0 0.1, correct? One common mistake here is to do the 1.6 minus 1.2, 0 0.4 divided by two, no? And you forget to divide on each one of the sides. Yeah, so you need to be careful. So this is 0 0.1. We do the same thing now here, but this time by looking, if you want from the side, so that would mean that we have 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. So can kind of do a similar figure. And same process. But this time we have 0 0.8, 0 0.6. And we are looking at what? This time this would be the Z, but we are looking at the change in depth, which is given by the Y axis, no? So it will be Y. And again, we do exactly the same thing. This is two meters. So if we do this, what would be the delta Y over delta Z? What is the change in height over here? Okay, so you will have then 0 0.1 on each side. So then what would be the change of this one would be 0 0.1 divided by two, which will be 0 0.05.
Okay, so now comes the tedious part what leads you to the one. So let's see what happened here on one of the stringers. So let's see it's stringers. Last. Flanders. Okay, so if you remember, let me just do here a very quick figure. Uh, let me do a very quick figure here. I'm going to be a good figure, but. I always say that a figure is worth. 10,000 words. So you have this. Uh, we have, let's do this. Can you do one with the but this here? It doesn't matter. I mean, it's quick. Okay, the only thing I want to show here again is that if we have the force over here, D, and where do we have our one? This is one over here. One, two, three, okay. So let me see stringers, flanges, let's say uh, number one. Let me add this down here. So number one, so we say stringer ones would be, we say what would be what? Tension or compression at the top? We say that it would be in compression. So if I do a little figure, let's see how the string over here. Compression, so on the direction, Let's see, we have X, Z, okay? So this force would be in what, in what direction? It would be on the Z direction, no? On the length. And it would be, why do I make it going inside and not outside? What's the definition of compression? Yeah, tension is the opposite. So it would be this. So this will mean that this now we have two components. A P Y one. Going up. And a P X one. So that figure makes sense because it's important. Yes, it's compression is going in. Now using these equations over here, the ones we have right here, this will mean what? Easy one will be equal to sigma Z1 times B1. Remember here, I'm not going to look at the signs, but if you want, you can look at the sign if you want. But what is sigma? We should know that this one would be what? This should be tension or compression? Compression, so it should be negative, no? So let's see. Again, I don't mind about the signs, but if we put the sign, this will be 55.56. We can put positive or negative, but it will be 55.56. Times B1. What is B1? 900 millimeter square times 900. So if you do the calculation, this is going to give you 50 kilonewtons. Okay, but I'm going to put here, this should be in compression. So if it's in compression, then what does that mean? I need to put a negative sign. This is the reason why I'm now I put a negative sign, okay? 
Sorry. I'm just using this equation here now. One centimeter. Yes. This one? Okay, so when it's something is in compression, what does that mean? Is that the force is going in. If it was in tension, it will be going out, okay? So we say that this due to the force Vy, this is moving up. So the top one, two, and three, the stringers one, two, and three, or flanges one, two, and three will be in compression, okay? So what does that mean? That the force will be going in. Because if the change is not the same thickness at the root and the tip, and not the same width at the root and the tip, there is components, no, of that action or that force in the string. Does that make sense? Okay. So basically, it will be PZ1. So we found the PZ1. Now PY1 or PX1 first. PX1 will be equal to what? Will be equal to PZ1 times the delta X, delta Z. Which is equal to what? The 50, or we, might, we might have to put the minus 50 now, we'll find out, times 0 0.1, which this will give you what? The value of this 50 times 0 0.1 is five. So now you can look at it from the sign, but I don't like to look at it from the sign, I rather look at it from the understanding. Px1 should be positive or negative? From the figure should be negative, no? But also will be negative if you put here the negative sign and just use the equation, no? But I'd rather you get it from the figure. You see it's going on the opposite direction than the x, so it's negative. Now following, the y should be what? Positive or negative? Just by looking at the sign. Should be positive, no? So let's see what we can do. So now, Py1. will be equal to PZ1. That's why I like to get the sign from the figures, PZ1 times delta Y over delta Z will be equal to 50. Yeah, don't put this sign here, eliminate. I don't like the signs on this stuff here, okay? Just do it by understanding. Going left, so going left, put it this way, that's why it's negative. And this one will be 50 times delta y delta z. This is 0 0.05, which gives 2.5 kilonewtons. Which is going up, which means that it will be positive, no? Okay, remember here I'm going to make signs from figure, from that figure over here. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more thing here on this page, then I move. So finally, you can find that, that P1 will be equal to Px1 squared, plus P Y one square plus P Z one square. You take the square root and you will find out that here we need to be careful. This will be what? Equal to 50.31. But we say that the force should be what? Tension or compression in one? Compression. So because it's in compression, I'm gonna put here a negative sign. And the reason why I put the sign is because next, obviously we need to follow a similar procedure for what? Stringers two, three, four, five, and six, no? And I'm not gonna redo this. I'm just gonna summarize everything in one figure. So, Similarly, for stringers two, three, four, five, 
and 6. What do we have? We're going to have a table. We're going to have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here I'm going to put the PZ. Kilo newtons. Here I'm going to put the PX in kilonewtons. Here I'm going to put the PY in kilonewtons. And here will be the P in kilonewtons. So we did the first one. What did we have? Minus 50, compression, minus 5, 2.5, minus 50.31. Okay, so B1 was equal to what? To what? B1 um, okay but let's say B1 was at the top correct but I'm, I'm thinking about uh, this is symmetric we have the figure uh, this is the symmetric so whatever happens here the opposite needs to happen at the bottom no okay so if this is the top is in compression the bottom should be in what tension so this should be then 50 Five. Oops. I think this one is still positive 2.5. I'm not 100% sure. It might be negative. 50, oops, should be, it's not straight, 50.31. Uh, yeah. Then if you do add two, it's a different, Cross section, we get here minus 66.67. So then the five will be two five that are symmetric. All right. Will be 66, positive 66.67. Here we get zero. This is zero because it's right in the middle. And this gives you here 3.33. 3.33. And then three and four, which are the one on the right end. See again, nearly 50 is the same as this one. This one would be 50. Okay, this one is strange, gets five, nearly five. 2.5, 2.5, oh, and this value, I forgot to put them. This one is minus 66.75, minus 50.31. This one will be 50.31, 66.75. Let's say here V X panel will be given by the force VX minus the summation of the P sub X R and the force Y panel would be equal to the VY minus the summation of the P Y S. So if you remember or not, this was coming from what figure? Remember, we, I cannot be the figure multiple times the other day. Try to make it big. 
make it small. I don't know why. I'm trying to make a space over here. Okay, I'm gonna redo that one. Let's try to make a space over here. Okay, remember we say that if this is your external force, let's say it's going down in this case. Okay, just doesn't matter which way we do it. But what do we say? This would be counterreacted by the internals, but you have what? Here will be the panel, and this will be the other, and this will be the P component, no? For each one of the stringers. So basically, we have the external will be equal to what? The X panel plus the forces of each one of the on the stringers. Dy external will be the dy panel plus what is the force of the external. So this one will be the component of the external, no? Yes. So obviously, in the present case or in this problem, uh, what do we have? Dx is equal to zero. So this is a bit difficult. I mean, not difficult, but but it's important to understand it, which implies that which implies that the V X panel equal to zero. But Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, the other, the other thing I wanted to say. So, in the present case, sorry, Vx is equal to zero. But that doesn't mean that the shear in these panels will be equal to zero because you still have panels on the x, y, or z, no? on the x and y direction. So let me rewrite this. You can keep yours, okay? I just don't like to have scratches. So in the present problem, so in the, yeah, okay. I'll... Dx equals zero, which is the external. Oh, sorry. Okay, leave one space. I just wanna make sure I make it clear. All right. So if Vx equals zero, then we're gonna have here. All right, let's move here to the line, leave one line, okay? Then we're gonna over here, B panel Y will be equal to BY minus the summations of the P sub Y R. Okay, so let's do this one and then I will do the other one. So here we have, what was the value for VY? What is the value of the external? 
100 kilonewtons, no? Okay, now, all this, yes, so, sorry. so remember, this is the panel. So this is the 100. So all the external need to be resisted by the panels and everything on the stringers, no? So here, we need to put here 2.5, we go to the table, 2.5 plus 3.33, plus 2.5 plus 2.5 i'm just copying from the column over here plus 3.33 plus 2.5 and if you do this calculation this is going to give you that the panel on the white direction is equal to Okay, so here, so in the present case, Vx equal to zero. And I can write, so I was correct before, which implies that the X panel equal to zero, which is the internal, but that doesn't mean that this term over here are equal to zero, they might be external, okay? So in other words, trying to simplify this stuff. If you have forces, if you have, let's say you have this page. If you want to have shear forces in this direction, what do you need to have? You need to have a force in this direction, no? To have shear, all right? If you want to have shear in this, in this plane over here, in this direction, you need to have a shear force in this direction, all right? Okay, so that way there is no shear flow in this panel here of the, of the page. But that doesn't mean that some of the load is not being resisted in that in other directions here by the stringers. Yes. Okay. Because basically we're just dealing with panels over here. Okay. So now the shear flow in the panels. Okay. So that means, so for example, this, so that this, this does, does imply that the VX, I'm forget about it. I don't want to make it more complicated. All right. So we are here 83.33. Yes. The what? That's all true for initial, yes. Okay, here is the concept. Basically, if you want to have a shear force in one direction, you, you want to have shear forces, uh, shear flow in one direction, you need to have forces in that direction, in the same direction. Otherwise, there is no friction. You put your hand, you want to have shear in that direction, you need to have a force coming in that direction, no? If you want another one, you need to have another force in the other direction. Okay? But what, is, what I'm having a hard time here to try to explain is like maybe, is that the panels here, this is one panel, okay? This is full one panel, but each panel has, is surrounded by here on each side, it has two stiffeners, no? But that doesn't mean that the force resisted actually by the stiffeners is equal to zero. That's the hard part I'm having to put into one sentence. That's what I'm he seeing here that the PXR, which is the force on the string and maybe in that direction, would be different than zero, no? Yeah, okay. All right, so case two at the end, what do we have? So now, 
that the shear force in the panel is known the shear flows can be evaluated. So since the skin is effective resistant bending, the equation we have is Q sub S equal to minus V panel Y divided by I X X. Y TDS plus the B sub R Y sub R. So again, this is the effect of the stiffeners or flanges. And this is due to the effect of the panels. So, in other words, if I use this part of the equation, will be kind of similar to the assignment that you have due to do today, no? Yeah? This is what we have been doing so far. So if you want to do the whole problem, you need to combine both of them, okay? Which is a lot of work, okay? So I'm going to simplify what I'm here. So for the sake, of simplicity. In calculations. The effect of the panels is neglected. So that means the equation we're going to have for Q of S would just be minus B, B, Y over I, X, X times B sub R, Y sub R. Okay, so here we go back to the problem we have been solving so far. So we make a cut. I know I call this one neutral axis, but you can call it also centroid, okay? One, two, three, four, six. Okay, so I'm gonna go a bit fast. I wanna finish this problem. So let's say, if I make the cut over there, what does that mean? You want six equal to zero. Then, or Q61 equal one zero. I'm gonna go counterclockwise. That's the way I have it on my note. So Q12, uh, Q12 will be equal to Q16, Q61 minus V panel Y over I XX, D1, Y sub 1. If you do the calculation, this is going to give you minus 20.83 kilonewtons per millimeter. Okay, Q, 
two, three will be equal to what? Q one, two minus V V Y I X X V two Y two minus 48.61. Q three four will be Q two three minus V P Y I X X D three Y three equal to that is sixty nine point forty four. Q four five will be equal to Q three four minus V P Y I X X V four Y four equal to minus forty eight point sixty one. We could have done that one by symmetry. And Q five six. Equal to Q four five minus V P Y over I X X V five Y five equal to minus twenty point eighty three. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. I mean, we have done the other ones by geometry, by symmetry, but. Okay, so maybe let me try to put them here on a figure. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we are over here in the adding sign. So this is 20.83. By symmetry, this is 20.83. This is 861. 861. This one here is 944. And here is zero because where we made the cut. I mean, this is same as the exam and the assignment, no? So now we go. So next we know that we have here, I'm gonna go very quick again. We have this, we know this is, like if we open this one here, plus, A Q sub now, so this is our Qs, and this is the Q bar, no? So we have Q bar equal Q plus Q sub now. Okay, so to save some time, I'm not going to rewrite Q one two equal plus the value we have plus Q sub Q uh, Q bar, no? Okay, so now this problem is what? is one cell, so it's statically determined, no? So what is the last equation we need to use now? All right, so summation of external moments will be equal to the summation of internal moments. And we're gonna have to define One, 
Here, this is our VY, which is 100 kilonewtons. Okay, so in this part, I have the data here to take the moments about the middle over here. She's about point, oh. Okay, so maybe this one, how much time we have? Three minutes? Maybe too much. Huh? My argument is because I have the data about 0 0.0. Okay. But yeah, we'll probably be smart to take about 106 because we get rid of the action of this one and the force. Okay. I agree with you. But uh, okay. Here, let's do this very quick again. Maybe put here 20.83, and we'll finish it next time. Let me just finish 48.61. Just do the same figure as before 9.44, and here we have to submit. So I ran down the expression for the external moment and internal moment, and I will stop over there. So what will be the moment created by the external? Oh, OK. I did here clockwise. You can do counterclockwise. I don't know why I did clockwise there. Whatever you want. Uh, what would be the moment? Then if we do it clockwise, would be? 100 kilonewtons times what is supposed to be that distance over here? Do we know it? I think from here to here was what? Twelve hundred, no? So it will be times six hundred. Now the internal, I'm going to do this. It's already this way. So you see that all these ones here, we make it to go. Uh, negative, no? Yeah, uh, we'll make it go clockwise. So you could write over here what? Uh, negative, but here what? Q12, which is the, let me put the value Q12 times 600 times half will be 300 plus Q23 times 600, what would be the left, the arm would be 300 plus, let me go to the line, plus now go Q56, if you want Q65 times 600 times 300 plus Q54 times 600, times 300 plus now the one Q43 times, what was the height over there? 600 times 600, that distance over here. Okay, and now something that I'm going to do a little bit different. If you do it this way, then what happened? The last term should be what? In here, I took into consideration the effect of all the Qs, no? But I need to put the effect of the Q sub naught. I here put the effect of all the Qs. Instead of using the Q sub bar, I use this one because, and then what can I do over here for the effect of this one? What can I say? You could put Q sub naught times all the different distances, no? Or what can you say? What, what have, have we been using? 
this will be two a q sub naught. So this closes this one. Uh, I put it clockwise, so this should be negative as well. Sorry. Did you understand what is what I did over here? All this, this is both of this is Q bar, no? So all this takes the effect of the Q1 to all these values in red. And this would take into consideration all this one here, where the A, what would be A? The area of the rectangle, no? Okay, so I wanted to finish it. Now the next thing will be to do what? Solve for Q sub naught and substitute back into these values and find the final distribution. Okay, so next we'll finish it next time. Oh, one thing, guys, I have some assignments over here. If you want to come get them, they're on my table. What is that, the assignment of today? Uh, no, that's the old one. Okay. But you came with a question or? Yes. No, you can zoom down.